like this two, conference will now be half, recorded. Hours. Yeah, I, I've seen. That's why I jumped on that time. I was like, holy crap, what's wrong? My video hadn't come through yet. And even though it only processes the recorded part, it doesn't start process until the meeting's over, <laughs> which I don't care. I usually don't get it out till next week anyway. Oh, do I have it out now? Yeah, you put Jason, Travis, and I together, and it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so um here's that you know i was talking about the new fans um i've got some information on them again and then some links to them as well but it's starting with container 103 and for anybody who is keeping up with their container number um and it's going to start from there so it may not be all of them from 103 forward it, you know it may be peppered in at first um but we're getting away from the centrifugal fans and getting to the inline quiet axial fans and these are plenty sufficient so you you may not even need to go get an you know an aftermarket inline fan anymore so the aurora has a three inch port the nova 51 and 63 are going to now have an eight inch port and the Nova 24 and Nova 35 and the Odins are going to have a six inch port. So, and the Mini 60, I think, is going to be a six inch as well. It's going to be the same as the Nova 24. So, that's the change coming in the exhaust system uh, from container 103 forward. So, that'll be some neat, that's some neat innovation because we, you know, everybody's getting those things. They're like, hey, why don't we just put them in there anyway? Or, you know, something similar. And the one that, you know, the 24s have been coming with these similar fans forever, and they've always performed very well, you know, so these are good fans. So I think that's all the new stuff I got right now. We're still working on some logistics stuff, um, but we'll have more on that a little bit later. So that's all I got. They can't from us, but they could. I hear Grant. Yeah, I was going to say Grant's on a phone call or something. Yeah, just a second. Sorry, guys. Oh, you're good. Muting. Hey, Brian. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, man. Hey, it's George. I just hey. want to ask you a question, man. What's yeah. the uh, email address for customer support again? For tech support, it's support at thunderlaserusa.com. If, um, if you don't put the USA in there, China uh, has adopted the same ticket system that we use and there's a support at thunder laser usa i mean uh, thunderlaser.com and ours is thunderlaserusa.com and it's confusing and i'm working on that because in the manuals most of the links still go to the chinese site or related stuff and that's throwing some people off so we're working on that but the uh, place for all support starts at support at thunderlaserusa.com and using that address is also how you schedule the training it is okay yeah, i just want to make just sure. email and say hey or you can just go on the site uh here uh, i'm still showing it on you can go in here to schedule and just search for schedule and then there's the the training but I, a lot of times we like to get people to email us because they may wait until their training period for instance because they couldn't get the uh, exhaust to come on and the reason why is it only comes on when when there's a job so they don't do anything else until they're training because they're afraid they're going to mess something up and so it's we like to catch you early and say oh if it's your scanning offsets here's a video on that or you know have you done this to try to get you ready so the training is on training and not setup because we can do 30 minute sessions for setup if you need help with ethernet connectivity or setting up a camera or things like that prior to doing that so that it'll all be in place and ready when we go because I was talking, I was on one of the calls, I think it was about a month ago, and I submitted a support ticket, I think it was like a few days later, and uh, I was having some issues with my camera. You, I think you made a suggestion check on my MacBook to see if I disabled the camera built into the Mac. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, my goal is to get that laser up and running before uh, December 1st, especially gotcha. since it's been here for three and a half months now, four sure. months. Yeah. Well, if, <laughs> it, if you want, just shoot us an email right now or when you get a minute and say, look, here's what I got. Here's where I am. And then I'll fast track you through what you need to do. Okay. Awesome. So, Thank you as always. Yeah, absolutely, man. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Don't forget your cheat sheet going to Brian's cheat sheet too, because it'll help it walk you through just a lot of the setup as well. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm working on that version too, but it may be like quarter three. 
<laughs> of next year when I get it done. Um, but I'm going to try to have some workflows. But yeah, the cheat sheet's the closest thing I have to any sort of uh, thing that's in line with what you need to look for to prepare and, and all of that. So it's a lot to it's a lot to dig through, though. There's some rabbit holes in there. So, how's it going, Grant? Oh, going good, man. Going really I, I, good. I think you just like getting on these meetings so you can use your camera and your technology. <laughs> I got to make it, use of it. It was like $100 I know. or something. Yeah. So I think that's the whole reason you got it, so you could be on here and all of that. It wouldn't bother me if it was a radio show, but I guess this is a little better. Um, well, if anybody's got any questions or anything, like I say, feel free to jump in any time. I uh, had a demo today, and every time I have a demo with my rotary, I have to kind of angle it just a little bit because, like I was telling you on the phone, I feel like mm -hmm. I got the very first one that was ever made, and it's a little off, so I'm going to need to go in there and play with it a little bit. But if I just slant it a little bit, it works just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. So like I said, it you know I can send you mine, and I'll take that one and take a hammer to it and get it straightened out and I'll just keep it. You can have the other one, whatever works yeah, for I'm, you. I'm going to see if I can play with it, but if I can't fix it, then I will send it to you. And the caliper, dude, I, I wasn't thinking when I bought that one and I keep using it, like it'll work. But when yeah. I've already got the cup in the machine and I try to use a foot long caliper, <laughs> it don't work. That's funny. That's great. That reminds me of those big, like super big Zippos that used to get, they were like this big, you know how they made just oddly large items, just kind of novelties. That kind of reminds me of that. It That's took your cool. whole entire hand to flip the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Two people, you got to hold yeah. the caliper and somebody else has to turn the knob. <laughs> yeah. Foot long caliper. Yeah. Brian will find better use out of that than I ever will. Yeah. There's a lot times in my shop. I wish I had a foot long caliper. Yeah, I, I just got a, my dial indicator in, so I'm going to start using that for something. I got it for those rotaries, but, you know, to test how true they were and all of that. But I haven't gotten oh, around Brian, to that yet. Yeah. On that Nova 24 that I have here, honestly, we could probably just use that one for what we were talking about because I want to get a Odin, a Fiber, and a Nova here. And the Nova that I have, will probably be like a 35 or 51. So I may not even use that thing. I got you. Yeah, we can figure that out. The only we thing should... is, is trying to get somebody out here to pick it up. I don't want to have to fool with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, if I ever have to ship a honeycomb bed, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Because Clay says, yeah, I just wrapped a bunch of uh, packing foam around it or, or bubble wrap. And step what I, yeah. a label what on I it. What I do is I, I wrap bubble wrap around it and then okay. I tape it. And then I put two pieces of cardboard on the outside, tape that. I haven't had any issues. I don't I know how you. else you would do it. Okay. Okay, cool. Basically, cut two pieces of plywood and put on either side of the honeycomb. And then yeah, I, I opt for the cardboard. <laughs> I have plenty of cardboard, not very much plywood. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Yeah. This is John. Hey, man. Hey, I had a question. I gave you a ticket the other day about setting the bed. Correct, and I and I went back and I set all the rails without the honeycomb in, mm -hmm. and uh, the corners are really really close. I mean all four corners, but then when I put the honeycomb in, uh, the whole front. I have to look at those two metal pieces again, but the whole mm -hmm. honeycomb is high in the front by about two millimeters. It's fairly high compared to the rest. Once I put the honeycomb in, it's different. I see, and the girls uh, are good. I set the grill. You know, I used the grills with a block of wood and the little plastic thing went around the, all the corners, and I, and I did the middles too, and they were all good. Okay. And, and you measure from the nothing. blades. Huh? Or were you measuring from the blades or straight from the frame? From the blades. Okay, because you were adjusting the rails that the blades sit in, correct? Yes. With the yes, Allen sir. screws, is that what you were doing? Yes, okay. Sir. Gotcha. And did you make sure that the pins were into the holes? Yeah, those yeah. index yeah. pins. Um, they got to go through holes. I got to take another look at it because I just haven't had time this week. I'm putting in a roof window and I had to do that. But yeah. um, that that might be possibly a bit, but it was off a little bit before and I haven't gotten back to look at it, but it's off all the way across. Before it was just like the ends. Now it's off all the way across. That's weird. The only reason it, I mentioned that 
<laughs> is because I went in there to use the machine today. And you know, Brian, that they use the machine during the day. And I was like, why is this off? Coming to find out, they put the honeycomb in backwards. Gotcha. No, honey, and, I, the, back, the back's good with the honeycomb, but the front isn't. So all um, the way across. I had a was. slight twist in it as well when I first got it. And I put my hand like on one side of it and the other side, I just put my weight on it and it flattened it right out. I was going to say, you could get up in there and jump around a little bit and make sure it's all firmly seated. Yeah, I just use my weight and just put a little bit on the front um, and the back, and then I, it's flattened if, it out. Yeah, if if the honeycomb is actually like warped or something, you should be able to tell by getting, you know, looking from underneath and looking at the gap between how it lays on the blades, because the blades are supposed to fully support that, and the indexing pins are not supposed to have any strain on them. They're just to keep it from sliding around. So the full weight of the honeycomb in every place should be evenly distributed across each of those blades. Okay. If it's not, just let's If know. it's not, then we need to see why they're not touching. Now, okay. when I say that, you might be able to slide a piece of paper through there, but I mean, you know, half a millimeter, you shouldn't see anything. You shouldn't deviate any more than half a millimeter on any of those things. Okay. Hey, John, when yeah. I first got my machine, I noticed that I had a couple of the blades fell into the bottom. When I went to go put the blade back in, it just fell right through. And it wasn't until I really sat down and looked at things, I realized that one of the bars got stuck in a low position and it was actually bending part of that uh, substructure and I couldn't get my, my uh, honeycomb to fit correctly. So I pulled all the bars out, all of them, put them all back in, and then the honeycomb dropped right in. But it was actually mm -hmm. out of whack because one of the bars got dislodged during shipping. Yeah, it was tweaking the frame. It was, it, yeah. And then once you pull all the blades out, that frame will relax and then, you know, they'll sit back in. And, and it sounds like you may have already taken all your blades out at one point or another. You would have yeah, to. I, really, I, check, to I checked them all because then I went around the corners and I did the adjustment screws in the corners after, and I pulled some of the blades out and there weren't any dropped off or anything. I appreciate the info, but there weren't any dropped off. I, I can't, can't say, I mean, I actually pulled some of them out. I did pull every one of them out but I did pull a couple of them out and they all came right out and there's no gaps at the ends. Cause I know you got to watch that the frame could be spread. Uh, didn't right. See any, didn't see any of that either. Okay. So, um, I'll take, I'll take another look yeah. at it. So leave that ticket open for now. And okay. I'll, I just sometimes, have time to see. yeah, sometimes they auto close after a month, but I think I have the notifications turned off because it doesn't matter as soon as either one of us get back into it or even, you know, reply back, it just opens back up like nothing's wrong. So there's, okay. we don't really have an open and closed other than in the analytics, you know, to track technician performance, but I don't use that particular metric uh, to track us because it's too, uh, I want competition, but I, it, it ends up being the regular kind of competition where I, I'm, I'm working this ticket and this ticket and this ticket and this ticket, and you're going to work those tickets. And I want all of our techs to be on all of the tickets all the time. So our numbers are, are goofy when, when admin looks at them. Okay. That's I'm fine. Sure. I just didn't, didn't know how y'all did it. That's all. Cause yeah. the CNC guys, they kind of either leave the ticket open or close it until you get it resolved. Right. Yeah, we, we try to leave them open for a month. And that sounds like a long time. But a lot of it is they may be waiting on a power supply from China or something. You, you know what I mean? So a lot of our tickets remain open. You know, they're, even though we resolve issues in minutes or, or first response times, usually somewhere between three and 12 minutes, depending on how it comes in. Um, after that, some tickets may be open a month or two while we're going through stuff. And as they get older in age, um, they drop a little bit to the list. But anytime somebody mails, you know, it bumps you right back up to the top again. Okay, thanks. Hello, Travis. How's it up there in Alaska? Uh, we're having snowmageddon up here today. <laughs> <laughs> they're so calling for a one to two inches of snow. We're at 10 so far. <laughs> we got, we got oh, 75 wow. down here in Virginia. It is hot today, T-shirt weather. Uh, it, it's uh, night, or, Sorry, it, it's warmed up. It's 24 degrees up here now. <laughs> yep, 10, 10 inches of snow and they just said that we're supposed to get another three to five wow yep well so are you making like uh snow shovels in your lasers today or something 
<laughs> I don't think uh, uh, your snow shovel would work too well. You need you need uh, <laughs> crawlers and stuff, huh? Big stuff. Oh snow yeah. Cats. Knowing him, he'll modify his lasers to shoot out in the parking lot to melt all the snow. Uh, get a plane I'm thrower or something. That. <laughs> I know that I'm I'm getting frustrated. I've had a my fiber laser has been stuck in customs for ever in a day. Uh, DHL's telling me it's. Uh, U.S. Customs that it's stuck in, U.S. Customs is saying they cleared it on the 27th and it's back in DHL's hand. And now DHL is like, well, what does the package look like? I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> we're back to this. <laughs> so, yeah, so DHL has uh, lost my fiber laser. Uh oh. Well, we used to call I'm DHL sure. day late. <laughs> huh? <laughs> we used to call DHL day late. Everything you sent around the world, DHL never made it on time when I was on a ship. It always showed yep. up after we left. Yep. Well, they're they're pushing uh, three weeks late right now, and I'll give them one of the weeks because of customs. But uh, yeah, <laughs> beyond that, I'm like, uh, where is it, guys? You'll have to go hunting it down. Yep. So, you and it's it not anyways. so much that they lost your laser; it's that you don't have your laser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's uh, not. I don't it's care not if they lose it as long as it gets here. <laughs> yeah, as long as you get one, you know. Yeah, that's crazy. So the sad oh, thing man. is they don't care. Nope, not one bit. Doesn't affect them in any way, shape, or form. Nope. So Grant, do you have anything new and exciting going on that you just can't wait to let the cat out of the bag or anything? I know he's there's the a reason feeding, I, no, there's the a reason feeding I question that is here. Jim said, Jim said, uh, yeah, we can talk about all the <laughs> stuff we're not supposed to talk about before we start recording. And so you weren't on here yet then. So I figured I would just check with you. He likes to give us nothing that I shouldn't talk about. Um, <laughs> just ready for this building to be built out here. I don't know how much of y'all know. Um, George has been out here. George, we're adding on in the back. There's going to be uh, more office space. And then to the side of the building, there's going to be a warehouse. And so they've been like really hammering down out there. It's been loud, but ready to have an office with a demo room and all that good stuff. But besides that, not a whole lot else going on. So a warehouse, does that mean you're just going to start stocking these things? It's not going to be a Thunder Laser warehouse. It's going to be a Stitching Heaven warehouse. <laughs> the goal is to stock these things, but we're selling way too many of them to stock them. Whatever ones we can get over here, I'm going to give them to people instead of keeping them, you know? It's you been that way from day one. It, it's been pre-order like that from day one, you know, I think from, from day one. So these weights aren't really shocking to me. I mean, they're a little more, you know, with the COVID stuff. But even prior to that, it's not terrible. Not, not once you get used to it. Well, then you guys uh, went from selling like 20 units a month to 200 and something units a month? Less than that. But now we're at. We sold 130 something last month, and I think we did that the two months before. But we're hoping in December we sell over 200. The the first year I did that, I'd moved like what 80 machines the whole year, I think. But that was me just walking in fresh, you know. And I was like, "Whoa, that's cool!" And now they're doing that in a week. I'm like, "What? <laughs> What's going on here?" <laughs> yeah, there was one week in December. I think it was the last week of the month we sold 83 in three days. And I, we all had COVID, working from home. <laughs> yeah, and and the weights aren't that bad. I mean, I ordered a CNC router made in the USA, and it took three and a half months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe weird. one day if the ports ever clear up, we can get them in like a month or so. Yeah, it only takes a a month, like two to four weeks, to get it from China to a customer if there was no problems. Mm-hmm. So how many of you guys sitting out there in the ocean now? There's no telling. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> he didn't want to admit it. There's really no telling. I could go count, but there's probably like six to ten containers sitting out there at the sea, and there's like 20 machines on each container. Jesus. Now my, I can't yeah. give you guys – my father-in-law today – he come into my shop. He says, guess what I did? And I'm like, what? He says, I bought this big, huge package of toilet paper. And I'm like, okay. 
Yeah, I think it was a 24 pack. He said, it was the last one in the grocery store. I'm like, okay. He says, you want to know how much it cost? I'm like, oh, this must be bad. $26. Wow. For a oh, 24, for... $26 for toilet paper. That is Excuse insane. Me. That's normal for us up here. Yeah, uh, yeah but we're before, in, we're... I, before I forget, <laughs> uh, happy Veterans Day. And I just want to take a minute. Uh, for that, I I didn't serve personally, but I have family members that did. So thanks everyone. So I thought I would take a minute. Um, I didn't realize that until the mail didn't run. To be real honest with you, I was Same wondering why get my stuff. And you thanks, guys, thanks, sir. thank you very much. Uh, if it makes anybody right? feel any better, I don't remember Christmas or birthdays either. So I, I'm just that way. But anyway, Grant, didn't That's you good. serve in the military? What? He's I too. Did. My bad. Yeah. He's, not, he's not old enough. He only graduated last year from high school. <laughs> Just about. I did twenty. I did twenty-two years in the Navy. Wow. All I, right. Thank I did you. 20, Twenty-eight in the Navy Reserve, but my wife did thirty active duty. Nice. Wow. My daughter's yeah. on number twenty-two. I was active duty. My awesome. wife did twenty years, years also. Duty. Yeah, it's awesome. like three quarters of my family is literally active duty. I've got my cousin and her husband, which I think one or both of them is retired now. But every single one of their kids is in the military, and they got one in high school that's already enlisted. And they got six kids, so they're that that that, that little group right there in itself is Big. crazy military. Mm -hmm. So. How many people are uh, in the process of making eight million Christmas ornaments right now? I had nothing. Not me. Not me. <laughs> None of you guys? Yep. No. I'm still oh, working on getting my laser work. Show me on YouTube how to do all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been slacking lately. <laughs> slacking? I just figured you gave up. No, I haven't given up yet. I've just, no, we've been. Uh, uh, swamped because some of the larger contracts that we have um, have just been, you know, we have FedEx, uh, they brought us nine trucks to letter up uh, for them and I'm like, oh, great, yay, <laughs> on top of everything else. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You do a lot more than just lasers, too. You oh, we, big, yeah. We're, yeah, we're a full service shop. We do, yeah. yeah, so and we do full, you know, uh, large format uh, sublimation, large format printing, vehicle wraps and graphics, screen printing, direct to film, direct to garment, um, sticker and label making. We, we do everything. We even have a little boutique up front. Mm -hmm. I figured he was getting slammed. I was like, yeah, it's, he's, it's that time of year. He's getting majorly oh, slammed. Been, yeah, it, it, it probably pays a little better to wrap a bus than it would be to make Sally an ornament. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Are you guys all in the uh, Hustle and Burn group? I, I am. Um, I, I just kind of sit back. I like uh, watching what they uh, are like all the drama. chatting about in there, and I just kind of laugh. <laughs> well, so I, I actually talked with a couple of the, the two ladies who run the site. One of them actually got a uh, a one on one session with uh, oh god, what's his name, Mark Cuban. They okay. want a contest where you get like a personalized, like, hey, here, I'll help you, you know, get your business up and running more efficiently. And uh, the number one, there's two things that, that he said that left an impression on her. Number one was find a niche, stick to it. And number two, sales cures all your problems. Yep. So the, the best thing um, that, I can, that I can say is find something that no one else likes to do. If you find something yep. that no one else likes to do, that is a perfect niche to be in. Yep. So the other question I got. Case, oh, sorry. That, that's why we have, you know, a lot of our contracts. Like, uh, for example, with FedEx, um, most of the shops up here don't carry adequate assurance or insurance to uh, be able to handle a FedEx contract, which surprised the crap out of me because they only require a million dollar insurance policy, and I've got, I've got a five million. Than that. <laughs> yeah, I've got five million, ten million because we do military work. So, yeah. you know, it was a cake in the, you know, walk in the the park to get that contract, and now they're like, oh, hey. We've noticed when you uh, put our decals on that the vehicles come back really clean. Do you guys wash them? I'm like, well, yeah. They're like, oh, well, do you want to come over on site and start doing our whole fleet every week? I'm like, 
<laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's weird that um, no, the companies ain't carrying that because I mean, my tiny little shop, I'm carrying more than that. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they just can't find any wrap shops. I mean, you know, because we have that policy. Uh, we have our bonding. Uh, we've got uh, garage keeper insurance. So, like, when I'm in installing a wrap on a vehicle, if I cut too deep and cut into the paint, my insurance company will pay to repaint the whole vehicle. So, you know, it's just, I don't understand why people don't value insurance as much. I mean, yeah, it can get a little pricey, but you just price your products accordingly. So. But yeah, we're, we're in the Christmas ornament right now. So we're trying to mass produce them. The question we is how much let... Oh, okay, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, we were supposed to have a show this weekend. We're not ready for it. So we ended up having to back out of it at the last minute. Um, so our first show is not gonna be until uh, uh, Black Friday. Is there any list of materials that cut good on the on your machine, on the lasers? like? You know, a list of, well, you want plastics, these are the right ones. If you want this, you want these are the right ones. These are the right ones to spray on the metal. These are the right ones. Has anybody got a list about, you know, when you're coming into this, it's pretty hard to find um, what's the correct materials. And you guys throw them out you know, every now and then. But I, I started to make a list a while back, but then what I found is with me being up in Alaska, our supply chain is so much different than everyone else's. Um, the list was really kind of useless for anybody. Um, so, but like on our, what we'll be doing is on Mad Moose, we'll be selling a lot of uh, blank material, um, pre-cut wood, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, and we're going to be doing. Uh, things like this, you know, pre-printed wood that you can cut out for ornaments and whatnot. So. Just because I've, you know, I've got the equipment to print stuff out that large. Most people don't, and uh, you know, they turn out to be. If I've got an ornament done. He loses the wheels on that chair. He's gonna be in trouble. <laughs> I just hope he comes back. <laughs> so does anybody else happen to have a list or? That might be something well, good. Good having a website. To be honest with you, Brian. Well, th there's a problem. There's a materials list, you know, and, and there's there's that, and that's that's a good starting point. And then the materials library is based off that. Um, but the problem with a list is is you may get two pieces of ply, and one may cut like butter, and the other one you might not be able to cut through it at all. I mean, it's things are so different. There's so many variables. Um, with Thunder, we we have the luxury of talking about speed and power and being able to have intelligent discussions about it because they're all all the same. They're all calibrated the same way and that kind of thing and standardized. But for instance, if you tried to even have a materials sheet like we do with, you know, 500 speed, 20 power for engraving acrylic or, or whatever is on there, whatever's on the list, if, if that was out in a generic Chinese laser forum, for instance, where everybody has all different machines, and even if they are the same machines, they may have different power supplies, they may the configurations may be different. There's there's no way to even have any kind of conversation about that at all. So that's why you don't see a lot about it. Um, it it's voodoo is what it is, <laughs> really. Well, I'm, I'm talking like stuff like like, like uh, Travis mentioned about the – he put up the link for the white, the jug of stuff to put on the, the slate to get it to cut. Um, oh, yeah. I've seen, seen some other videos where they talked about two or three different metal sprays, including you, Brian. You have one where you tried two different metal sprays. That kind of stuff, you know, those, those probably some of those brands are available to all of us, no matter where we live in the country, just knowing that they exist. And, sure. You know, I talk the to Facebook Andy. users group has a lot on it. Does it? Yeah. yeah. But like the, the metal sprays, in my mind, the only one that works good is a Laser Bond 100. Um, all the other ones are kind of junk. So how many um, people done Let's Go Brandon stuff out of curiosity? <laughs> I have stayed away from it. <laughs> um, yeah, so here, here's a little tidbit of information. Um, the day after that actually happened, it was already trademark, uh, trademark turned. <laughs> so everyone that's like... doing that, now that, uh, that trademark attorney is running rampant, having fun with it. So... Um, back to that question you asked, John, 
I do have a draft about marking compounds, about Ceramark, uh, Brilliance, Enduramark, and then a bunch of heaves. Uh, and then there's Thermark and there's Laser Bond, and I can add to it. And if you'll notice that I created it on March the 18th, um, it's just one of those things that's not on the on the front burner. <laughs> but, but they're but in the I works. Can, I can save you a lot of time. So Brilliance is only good for their colors and other stuff. They their uh, their black spray sucks. But like their frosted sprays and their colored sprays are really good. Um, Sarah Mark so and Sarah Mark. So not um, any good for black. Brilliance isn't any good for black. It's just their colors. I didn't. I didn't care for it. Um, honestly, with Brilliance's black, I got better results with just straight dry Molly lube than I did with Brilliance. Um, but dry Molly lube is a royal pain to work with. It's super messy. Oh. Um, you're you played kidding. with that one before? Oh gosh, a lot in the K40 days. <laughs> yeah. so Don't really colors, care for that. The colors were good, huh? But yeah, the the Laser Bond 100, I have never had issues with. Um, you know, it adheres great, it engraves great. Um, it's got a really uh, wide range of uh, power tolerances, uh, where some of the other ones you have to have it really super dialed in. Um, but yeah, Laser Bond, the Laser Bond 100 is probably my my go-to one. And that's funny because that's one you don't hear about all that much. Nope. Yeah, I you didn't don't. know about it till just now. Yep. And I, I like it's to a, keep it that a, way. When it, when my stuff turns out nice and black on stainless, like, how are you doing that? I'm like, hmm, dry molly lube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's also price, how right? you apply it, you know, and, and the, well, the other thing is, is somebody looks at a can of this stuff and goes, oh my gosh, it's a hundred dollars. You know, that's crazy, but it's kind of like the same thing I saw. Like if you have a laser printer, uh, one of my laser printers to put new cartridges in it, new toners, it's like $700, but you know, I could get 20,000 color prints out of it before I ever had to do anything. It would last me six years before I ever had to get toner again. And if you apply this stuff correctly, the rattle can is the least uh, efficient manner of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of waste with a rattle can. The best way is even a cheap uh, or inexpensive or cost effective airbrush. You don't have to go for the gold on that. You can use a, a tester or something probably would give you enough enough spread for that kind of thing. You're not, you know, putting clear lacquer on a on a 50 Osmobile. You're <laughs> putting on some, you know, coating. So um, that's the best way because you can apply it. And if you keep your substrate clean, you can even if you do have overspray, you can scrape it up. If you get the stuff that's the powder and and you know mix it up yourself, you can rethin it and you can put it back in the container and reuse any excess. If you do happen to to have a lot that you don't use, you can scrape it back up as long as it's not contaminated and reuse it. Introduce it back into the container. So there's a lot of benefits to using that uh, powder and mixing it yourself and using an airbrush if you're going to do a lot of it. There's also the tape, um, but that's I think Ceramark does the tape. Yeah, I haven't I haven't tried the tape yet. The tape is really cool. A lot of people that are do electrical contracting and they have those stainless steel or they do like hospital outlets and all of them have to be numbered. Every outlet has to have a number on it. Uh, and a breaker, you know, all the breakers have to, they use it a lot for that kind of stuff. And because it's easy to apply, you just put it on. It costs a little more, but at the end of the day, it costs them less in time, you know, to pay yep. a little more for a, a, a material that they can apply to that small area that they need to do yep. quickly. I just use my uh, UV flatbed printer for that. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> it works great. Hey, Brian. Yeah, I know it does. Yeah, go ahead. Now that we're talking about this, Rhonda was just asking me, a while back when I first started, I think you told me about a company that makes powder for metal marking that are different colors. So you can Heaves. metal mark different. How do you spell it? Heaves. It's uh, H-E-V-E-S. Hang on, I'll pull it up. Oh, what happened? Did I get? Oh, never mind. Uh, uh, no, he, yeah, he, Heaves is good. Um, I played around with a little bit of their stuff, and now Brilliance is coming out with the colors as well. Um, but yeah, and, uh, you know, and even if you wanted to start off with a rattle can on that marking spray, I mean, yeah. I can spray easily a hundred plus tumblers out of one can of that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, your cost still isn't that bad. Let's see. Here's oh, the okay. reference chart. Uh, here's now some of this is for other stuff too. They have some for porcelain. They have some for glass. They have some for metals, I think. So, yeah, that's the one. Do you want me to link that grant so you can copy the link? in the chat yeah if you don't mind 
I just I haven't looked at the chat yet. Okay, good. Nobody said anything because I sure would have missed it. But yeah, that's the Heaves ink. Travis, what uh, label printer are you using? Um, right now, I'm using uh, an iColor 250, um, and I'm getting ready to what is what I'm we're getting ready to upgrade it um, to uh, what is it? I've looked at a couple different brands, like the big ones, like the Roll, Rolo, Rojo, or Rolo, whatever the heck it is. And so the... a lot of it comes down to how much you actually are planning on doing. Um, so my little uh, my little iColor 250 that I have, um, what I like about it is it prints and cuts all at the same time. Um, it's definitely not the fastest in the world. I can only do about 300 sticker or uh, 3,000 stickers a day. Um, but the new one, that's not many, that's not much for stickers. Okay. Um, I'm talking about for one, shipping, for shipping labels. You're not using that for shipping labels, are you? Oh, no. No, that's no, what I'm no. I, shipping I'm Sorry, I missed that. I, missed I use the Dino 4X. It's compatible yeah. with more systems out there than any of the others. Yep. Yeah. For shipping labels, that's why I use as a, a Dymo uh, 4XL. Um, cause it sync, like Brian said, it syncs right into everything that I use. Yeah. Cause I've looked at that and was it the Rojo or Ro? I uh, forget the other brand name was. Save your um, save yourself. Now, a, if you want to go commercial, you can get a zebra, but you know zebras yes. aren't bad. But there's just something about the the Dymo is just kind of plug and play. And it is. Um, don't buy the Dymo brand labels. You can get the knockoffs off of Amazon or eBay for next yeah. to nothing, and they work great. Yeah, um, I've never had a jam. I've never had one. Yeah, come and rolled on me or anything. It's Rolo, yeah, so, I guess it's what it's called, the other one I was looking at. Yeah, so we we just fried our first Dymo label uh, maker. Uh, we had to replace or replace one of them here, um, and it was seven years old. And we print a lot of labels. <laughs> you said it's a Dymo XL? Uh, 4XL. 4XL, yeah. Yep, that, that's the only one of theirs that will actually hold the 4x6 shipping labels. And it's also in the list of compatible printers for most of those applications, even if they're web-based, like for FedEx or UPS or ShipStation or any of those that integrate with a label printer automatically. That's That one is is super, super common. Yep. Yeah, and that's what and we do is all of, all of our different stores and everything, they all feed to ShipStation, and we use ShipStation to uh, feed out uh, to the Dymo. Yeah, yeah I think that's actually yeah, the one the I had. Funnest thing I've ever mm-hmm. had is when I put that label maker there. Because now when somebody says I need a, a a sensor for my water chiller, I can get all the information and hit a button and walk around and throw it in a box and my label's sitting there and I stick it on there and put it in the outgoing box and I'm done, like five minutes. It's, yep. it's yeah, incredible. I, I used cool. to do it all by hand when I was doing retail before. And I was like, this time, this girl ran up, I want to go back into doing retail. I getting a label maker that handwriting making labels by hand sucks yeah and this yeah. helps a lot too the barcode scanner i've got barcodes on everything so i manage inventory just by scanning it in and out and i can get the serial numbers off of a dsp before i send it to someone just by clicking a button and it goes right into my systems it's wireless so that's yeah. a good thing to have too you can get one for 20 bucks yeah, I, I spent a little more on mine. Um, the yeah. one that we have is uh, Bluetooth. And so it actually, uh, it'll hook up to all of our computers. Um, so we've got barcodes on uh, the computers. So you just go up and you scan the computer and it'll actually sync that barcode scanner to that computer With while that you're computer. using it. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's really, really nice. And I think it was still only like, you know, 60 bucks or something like that. It wasn't yeah. much. Yeah, yeah the other now, thing I've... Uh, I might have to get the price gun because I've got a couple of local stores. I started putting tumblers and stuff in because they're just letting me. Instead mm-hmm. of having to go in and use their price guns all the time, I was like, it may just be more efficient if I just buy a cheap price gun and just price the stuff here. And well, if you're getting a if you're getting a Dymo 4 XL, um, you you don't have to run the big shipping labels on that. You can run um, small like I, the labels I, I use labels. for pricing here is uh, they're called book spine labels. They're one inch by two inches. Oh, so um, and you can run the smaller labels too on that thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So and that's that's what I do is we just run those book spine labels, and like I said, they're one inch by two inch, perfect size, and it prints out all of our our uh, description, the price, and the barcode. So you can even put your company logo and stuff on it. Then you can do whatever mm-hmm. you want. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, it's safe. 
Because, I mean, the price game is only like $30, $40, but the heck if I can buy a roll of stickers for that. Yep. And and then you're just going, oh, I need 50 of them, and you hit print and walk away. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, instead of hitting and changing, yeah, it'd be way easier. Yep. And you, you could get the, the 450 Turbo. It's a twin rider uh, to go beside your 4XL when you get a little bigger, and you can have three different size labels ready to go just the push of a button. Yep. That's the other one that we have. So we have a 4XL for our shipping labels, and we have a 450 Turbo for all of our normal stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and actually the other one that I have, um, it doesn't work for shipping labels, but for the stuff I do in the back uh, for work order tags is I've got a brother uh, label printer that runs um, full roll stock that's not pre-trimmed to any length mm -hmm. and it automatically cuts it to whatever. So when we're doing like a custom Pantone mix inks or whatever for screen printing, um, we just log in, get our Pantone ticket, stick it on the side of the jug and it has all of our measurements on it for us to weigh out. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty slick too. Yeah. Neat stuff. Hey, Brian, yeah. I sent you a message in the uh, chat window. Uh, yeah, I'm I saw be... that. It's... I'll have to check that out. Yeah, so I'm not in, in you know, telling everybody to go out and get one, but I spend a lot of time out in the garage. Uh, the mm -hmm. garage is very dusty. <clears throat> I was looking for a way to keep the air in there a little bit better um, and uh, also cut down on some of the smoke because you still get a little bit of smoke that leaks into the room. And uh, I've also learned that when you etch or cut acrylic, that's a wonderful smell. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I found when I was in uh, Best Buy, Dyson makes an air purifier. It also heats and cools. So my garage is detached from the house. It's not attached. It's a separate standalone dwelling. And I do have a, um, a split heater out there. But <clears throat> if that fails, and uh, up here in the Northeast, it gets kind of cold, mm -hmm. my water chiller will freeze and that'll you know lock up my, my tube and crack it. So I found this thing from Dyson. It's called an HPO2. Anything O2 and up, in the HP series, as long as I think it's an even number, um, heats and cools and purifies the air. And then after that, it's basically like bells and whistles. But even with the little thing running at max speed at 10, very quiet, unobtrusive. You could put it in a straight stream or have it like on widespread. You can oscillate it and then you can control it remotely from your cell phone. So I use it as like a backup heater and I use it to purify the air out there. So this way it's, you know, doesn't smell as bad. So gotcha. weird little tip for everybody that I discovered. Yeah, I was scrolling through. It looks like as I was scrolling, you were hitting every one of these bullet points right on the head as I was going down through I there. Think so he's, I think he's an affiliate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Best part, if you buy it on eBay, you can pick the thing up for like 300 bucks because new yeah. in the store, they're crazy. They want like 650 or $700. I'm like, no way. I'm too cheap. Gotcha. Yeah, we just gave that just for my wife's purifier for her office. And she had to reopen the state medical board said, you have to have air purifiers and you have to have this. And yeah, we spent over that just for that stupid thing. And it doesn't do all that stuff. Yeah, they get on so up there. Here's something that uh, I think th th these are kind of spendy, but I think everyone needs to have one of these in their laser room. So this is a, a live act or live uh, air quality monitor. So it actually sits there and it tells me uh, like if I'm in case I'm cutting wood that has formaldehyde in it, it'll measure all my formaldehyde levels, VOCs, mm. uh, my PM10, PM2.5, PM1, and PM2.5 or uh, 0.5. Um, Who makes that? Huh? Who makes that? Uh, there, just put it in chat. What kind of I'm cost? Just, I got one. I got a portable one. What kind of cost? Ooh, I haven't seen that one. Yeah. I like this one because I just I plug it in on USB. It's got a little uh, um, card in oh. the back, a little SD card, so it actually logs it. So that way, if I ever have, okay. um, once you guys get bigger and have employees and stuff, it comes in handy because that way, if I ever have an employee that goes. Hey, uh, you know, I got sick because of the air quality there. I can go, <laughs> no, you didn't. I have the data for it. <laughs> I'm scared yeah. of running one of those in my shop. Because it's just all the motors that comes out of this place. It's <laughs> it's bad. Yep. Hey, 
I'll, I'll, we'll get a link up here in just a second in the chat. I'll pull up the one that I got. Do you know the one that you got, Travis? Yeah, I put it in chat. Did you? I already linked it. Yep. Yeah, yeah so the one I got is, that is uh, they're 176 bucks. Okay. Nothing. And it Mine looks nice. Like Let's see. But it doesn't do it doesn't do the logging like like that one. Now I'm gonna have to send this one back and get another one. It has an SD <laughs> card on it. I would assume it logs. Let's see if I can find my air quality meter. Yeah, there we go. This is the one that I got. And okay, it was 115 bucks. Um I'll link this one too. It, again, it doesn't have the telem I mean it doesn't have the uh data, at least not. I don't think it does. I'll have to look. I yeah, my wife already yells at me as it is because the booth in here, I could just see her, that thing going off constantly. She would be yelling at me. Yeah, yep. Get back to the uh, chat. And that's the one thing, like with mine, I've got limits set on it, so it screeches at me whenever I break a limit. Um, so, you know, anyone who's in here, uh, if it's me, I, I'm just kind of ignore it. But if it's any of my workers or my wife or anything, if they hear that go off, they have to get out of the room until it flushes. <laughs> Yeah, and I like that one you've picked out there, Travis. Maybe I'll get one of those for home, and then I'll keep this other one for my toolbox. Yeah, no, I've, I've been really happy with it. Um, and what's nice is it's, even though it's a box and it plugs in, I mean, like right now it's running and it's got a little battery in it. It'll run for a couple of days on a battery. And so when we go out and do uh, on-site installs, uh, especially out at the hospital, um they always love to yell at me for you know smells i'm like i'm using a citrus cleaner it's fine They're like no no the vocs and so I'll, I'll usually have my little meter sitting there with me i'm like vocs are just fine mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah one of the sprays i use in here has got 850. i actually have to sign waivers to get it that's awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the stuff i use is nasty. uh I, i've got a i have a couple of products that i use um like one of them, I don't let any of anyone touch. I'm the only one who will use it. Um, it comes out of uh, Korea, and it's a special tar remover for vehicles. And it's the nastiest stuff. I mean, it's it's worse than using uh, diesel on a car to remove tar and bugs off of. But it yeah. works. The one conversion varnish I use is one of the ones I have to sign a commercial license for because um, they just don't sell it to anybody. But the, even probably two to three days after the off-gassing, it's horrible. But the thing is, the that conversion varnish is almost indestructible. Um, yep. I've actually used it on a countertop. After it cures, it's perfectly fine. Anybody um, ever tried the Campbell Crystal Lac? You, it's a, you, you, you put it together. You um, put the stuff in. Two-part. Yeah, it's a two-part. You you're, you um, catalyze it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really good. It's, it's like you say. It's a. It's not. It's not cellulose lacquer. It's a chemical bond lacquer, and it. It's impervious to all kinds of stuff. But boy, what a wicked smell! God. The ones I like the most probably is uh, ML Camel's Magnamax. Yeah. Uh, lacquer. Um, we sprayed that in the finish shop, and I think it has a good smell. Everybody else says it stinks. It's the conversion <laughs> varnishes that absolutely kill you. I'm worried about your nose if you think it smells good. <laughs> I actually have to, with the conversion varnishes, you always tell when I use it because that's actually when I grab a respirator. <laughs> yeah, we, we've gotten away from it. using, yeah, we've gotten away from using lacquers and varnishes um, anymore. If it's uh, something that's food, we use a uh, walrus oil on. And then if it's uh, like a plaque or something that just needs to be protected, um, we're just doing a, a really light coat of epoxy over it now. Um, and you know the epoxy that we're using is no odor no voc and takes a little longer to dry but yeah works good <laughs> sorry i got sidetracked I, 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 we just hit our uh five thousandth uh support ticket the system's been in effect about two years and we just hit five thousand so I don't know that's, if that's was good it me because I already got a response. Oh, um, <laughs> did you get a response? Yeah, Chris already replied. I'm like, oh my gotcha. gosh. Yeah. Hey, you want to you want to see something cool? I'll, I'll show you real quick. Here's how this kind of works. So let me let me let me get this all the way up here. So Chris actually made the the five thousandth ticket, and he says he needs a uh, red dot pointer. 
So all I had to do is go over here and put Chris in here, I think. There he is, and hope that, okay, there's no address stuff. Then I just add the item, and then boom, in a minute. I didn't know I didn't have his address in there, uh, but you add the item, and then you can go back into the ticket system and check. So all of this stuff, we can look and see if there's been any previous orders. That one's not going to show up yet. So I'll send him a red dot. But I can have that out the door in like five minutes in the outbox from here, from the first time the ticket came in. Hmm. Of course, I know his machine. I don't have to go through with him. Let me get your serial number and you know all that stuff because I, I know his machine. Uh, but that's kind of neat. He he actually made the the five thousandth ticket <laughs> to make it roll over. <laughs> okay, so funny. now I have to ask. Now that I know that that's all uh, done on WordPress, what is that plugin name? That is not WordPress. Oh, um, you talking about the ticket system? Yeah. The actual ticket system, yeah, that's just an integration, but our parts system, our e-commerce is uh, WooCommerce and WordPress. Um, this is actually Freshdesk. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And it's just got a bunch of integrations for our calendar and Zoom and, and our remote assist. See, we can start or schedule a, a remote session right from here, you know, gotcha. so if I needed to, yeah, it does some pretty cool stuff. And it can look at the total time spent. Uh, if there's any service tasks, there's time logs. It'll keep track of how long we're in each ticket, uh, to do lists and the whole bit. So yeah, it's pretty neat stuff. Huh? They have, there's a free tier of that too. Hmm. Fresh desk. <laughs> yeah. That's what Lightburn uses too. I think is fresh desk. And I think a few other people, I think cohesion 3d uses fresh desk too. But um, it's enterprise level stuff. I mean, you you start paying, you know, when you get up there in the tiers. Uh, but by that time, you're doing you you need it, you know, and it's worth it. Yeah. So growing pains are good. But it is a tiered system. You can add stuff as you as you grow. So it's yeah. got full dis dispatch. You know, I can have service technicians on the ground, uh, and it's got a full dispatch center. You know, where it schedules the times and the appointments and checks where you're at and everything. It it's cool. So, yep. so and that's actually for everyone on here. That's one thing that I would highly recommend if you don't have a system in place to track your orders, track your jobs and track them through the production statuses, yeah, spend the money on it. <laughs> so, you know, a good one is not going to be cheap, um, but it, they're worth their weight in gold because it will boost your production up quite a bit. It'll keep you on track. Um, my big issue that I always had is. I, I want to work on the projects that I think are fun. I don't want to do the, the other just <laughs> monotonous work. And so my wife's always having to keep me on track for that, um, you know, trying to make sure that I'm getting all the jobs done in a timely manner. And um, if it wasn't for my wife and the software that we have, I'd, I'd be all over the place and I'd have jobs sitting around for months just because I didn't want to do them. Mm -hmm. Yep. I got that happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. So I see the Aubrey's in here. I mean, she ever introduced herself on here, or is she just stay isolated? And she must not be even listening. That's my guess. That's just to boost the stats up, so it looks like there's more people on here. I just figured yeah. I gotta give somebody harassment. <laughs> yeah, well, if that was the case, I'd just be on here 40 different times. I'd just use a different email address for everyone. <laughs> like 40 BBs in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's all that I can think of that's, uh, anything yeah, new. This, pl this place was probably safer when I f first was started watching these videos and I never said nothing. <laughs> oh, it's, I think it's totally safe. We would never do anything to get out of hand anyway. No, that's, that's for after Brian leaves that we that's get out the of after hand. party. Yeah, yeah that's the after party. <laughs> I'll leave you the keys to my office and come back and it's trashed. <laughs> I told him how how out of control those things get us. They've been gone like two. Well, the last time I think it was me and Jason, I think we went three and a half hours or something like that. We were sitting here ch chatting. <laughs> I was like, hey, when yeah. I both looked at the clock, go, oh my God, what time is it? Yeah, that's kind of wild. So, well, shoot, does anybody else have any questions or comments or gripes or complaints or accolades or anything Travis yeah I, I like to talk to you afterwards or either on here or Facebook or something 
Okay. Word. Yeah, I can hang out for a few. Okay. Um, so what do you guys uh what do you guys all want to learn on the next class? Uh, do you want me to start getting into Christmas stuff? Sure. Photos. Photos. <laughs> on the uh, subway tile slate, multicolor. Yeah, <laughs> not the Nicky Norton method yet. <laughs> Don't want to go that far yet. I, I want to try that one of these days. Oh, it's a, it's a blast. Be. But um, the big thing is you've got to uh, invest the time to learn how to spray paint out of a rattle can and Even. get it consistent every single time. And then you've got to sit down and just play with your laser. Because, um, you know, I can throw out the numbers I use for multicolor, but this is not going to matter. For, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it's, I might... Yes, yeah, someone might be spraying, you know, two microns thicker than I am, and that changes everything. Yeah. So. Well, cool. I guess I'm going to jump off here. I got a few new tickets to go look at, and uh, I better get Chris his red dot pointer. We wouldn't want his red dot to be fuzzy for too long. That's a perfect 5,000th ticket. So, anyway. Yep. Hey, Brian, speaking of, um, so when I bought my 63, it was before you were around, um, and it was before they did a lot of things. Um, I don't have a wide nozzle for that. I've been using the wide nozzle off my 35. Is there any way I can just order just the wide nozzle? Mm. Let's see. That's the six millimeter. That one. Which one? Yeah. Uh, let me look. Let me look. Because I always – see, I save a couple of these out of every – you know, my inventory. I, I fib a little on it, so I have a fudge factor for warranty stuff. I may okay. have one back there. Let me look, and I'll shoot you a message and let you know here in a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. So, yep. All right. And when you asked well, about other things to have on the call, my local vet, when I was over there, he was talking to me about maybe making pet memorials in stone. I actually have a, a buddy of mine who has who sells soapstone and uh he can give me scraps at zero dollar charge. Mm -hmm. So that I've might never be tried soapstone. There's a lot of it around here in my neck of the woods, I think. At least the close to where I lived, it was called Soapstone Mountain, and I can't imagine they would call it that if it didn't actually contain some. So <laughs> but I've seen stranger things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I just lost. We had to put my cat down, sixteen-year-old cat, and then turn around. We adopted a foster, or foster slash adopted another kitten. Two lost one of those two all within two weeks. Oh wow! And now my in-laws, which they live here, they're gonna have to put their dog down next week. So we've been to the vet. And I'm going. Yeah, we've talked about memorials a couple times. So does anyone in here do epoxy work with their laser, or in I conjunction with their it. laser? Poxy. So, um, you know, we, we toyed around with the idea of engraving, like, um, uh, you know, having when a, a dog or cat gets put down, they take an ink pad, um, put it on their foot, put on a piece of paper, scanning that in, engraving it on wood or whatever. Um, we toyed around with that idea, but what we ended up going with and actually works really well is um, after they get the pet cremated or whatever they do, uh, they send us about a teaspoon of the ashes and we incorporate it and mix it in with epoxy um, and like little charms and that kind of stuff. Gotcha. So, and it, it's kind of neat. Yeah. I asked my in-laws, my mother-in-law, cause she's really attached about doing the epo or cremation and no, they wanted it buried with the other animals. So I had to go out and dig another three foot hole in the woods. <laughs> but you know, wor worst case scenario, there's always a, uh, um, you know, the good uh, Marlboros or camels that you can use to get the ashes. <laughs> yeah, you could. Oh. I'm going to jump off here, guys. Do you want me to hand this off to anybody? I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>